I've got two series ideas. Which one should I pick? How about both at the same time? That should do the trick. 22 full years of questing. No banks or death. This will be fun. RuneScape 3 Hardcore Ultimate Iron Man. Questing through 2001. Welcome back to September 23rd, 2001. There is a dragon that needs to be slain. But we are nowhere near ready for that. We are level 34 in full steel. And that's really, really not going to cut it. And so, we must train. I said it's not going to be only chickens last time. And I stand by that. We're not going to be fighting only chickens. But we will be fighting chickens to start. Because they are very, very easy and pretty good XP too. So we're going to get the chicken pen ready to go. No chickens inside. Fred is inside. And start by getting our experience nice and even. So, off by two. That should be fine. And then we're going to set our experience to all of them. So attack, strength, and defense. Each chicken that we smack is 32, 33 total experience. So that is going pretty evenly into all the stats here. And since this is faster, we actually also have some time to pick up some bones and bury them for a bit of prayer XP. So that's also good. What we're also after here is the feathers. The feathers are going to be very useful. Moving to other things so we can actually get some food. Because beyond chickens, we are going after significantly more dangerous foes. And having some actual food would be a good idea. We're going to spend our time smacking chickens, burying bones, getting all kinds of experience. Well, and by all kinds I mean attack, strength, defense, constitution, and prayer. But, yeah. And picking up the feathers. We're going to be here for a while. Just because I want to get to the next reasonable upgrade before we move on. That's going to be plenty of feathers. So that's good. 21 attack, strength, and defense. That is nothing. Part of the Kremja crossing shortcut. And Sunstriker boots in Damonheim. So, none of those are things. Eh, at least not yet. What it is, is more accuracy, more damage, more defense. But a lot of stats really come from the actual gear at this point, so. Mostly, we're worried about getting the levels for new equipment here. And there is 29 constitution. And that is more life points, which is always good. 14 prayer. That is nothing. 4.5 experience per bone. Not going to get too many prayer levels here. But it's something. It's definitely something. 22. Attack, strength, and defense. It is nothing. Part of the water obelisk shortcut. And nothing. Having three different levels level up does give more opportunities for a whole bunch of stuff to be unlocked. So, that's something. Technically, it might be faster to like focus on attack to get new weapons more quickly. 
But not, not for chickens, though. We are already at maximum chicken killing speed as it stands. No, that's fine. We are bonking them very effectively with this mace. 15 prayer. That is nothing. Just more prayer points. 23 attack strength and defense. That is nothing, nothing, and nothing. Ah well. 30 constitution. That is a milestone level achievement. And we got all the different kinds of portent of restoration for. Regular, Attuned, and Daemonheim. And also, full healing from foods that require 30 cooking. That's another reason we need higher levels here. So higher level food can actually heal us correctly. Would be a smart move. 24. Attack strength. Oh, not attack. Off by... One tiny bit of experience. There's a 24 attack. And nothing. Fury and greater fury. And provoke. More abilities that don't exist. And there's 16 prayer. For improved reflexes. An improvement. For sure. 25 attack strength and defense that is black weaponry white weaponry nothing a quest requirement black armor white armor initiate armor from the ground shield frog leather armor fungal armor and all five war priests tier one out of that, the only thing that exists is black armor. And there is 17 prayer. Nothing. Interestingly enough, black armor exists, but black weapons don't. So, we can't upgrade our weapon, which is very much one of the more important parts here. So, we're gonna get to the next actual full tier of things before we move on here. And also 31 constitution. Nothing there. Not too many unlocks with constitution, really. But that's okay. More health is more health. 26 attack strength and defense. There's nothing, nothing, and nothing. Alright. That's fine. Also, 18 prayer. For nothing. Seem to be able to pretty evenly get an attack strength, defense, and prayer level with the amount of bones we're picking up. But also, the prayer level is much lower, so it is still significantly less prayer experience. Any prayer experience is good prayer experience, I suppose. 32 constitution. Nothing there. But it was level 38 combat, so that's something. 27 attack strength and defense. It is nothing, nothing, nothing. And 19 prayer is Rapid Restore. Nifty. Don't really have any stat drains we really need to be worrying about quite yet. But that's an option. It's, it's something. 28. Attack Strength and Defense. Nothing. Nothing. In Cantor's Boots in Damonheim. Sure. And 20 prayer. 
That's a achievement, milestone kind of situation. And also, proselyte equipment and god robes. That kind of stuff with just prayer bonus and no actual stats really has fallen out of favor. Since prayer no longer prevents 100% damage. Not really, not really what you want these days. Eh, there's still situations where you want prayer bonus. Just not combat situations. At least not quite that much. Focusing just on prayer. There is the first offhand rubber chicken we've seen today. So that's pretty fun. Still don't need that. We'll see if we can get more of them on the ground at the same time here. Also, it's kind of in the way of the loot interface, unfortunately. But that's okay. 33 constitution. And 39 combat. No unlocks for that. 29 attack, strength, and defense. That is nothing, nothing. Immortality. I could go for some immortality here. That'd be pretty convenient for the hardcore bit. But that is evolution of combat. And then 21 prayer. For the bone crusher. Could be useful in the future. 30 attack strength, and defense. That is achievements, milestones, and quite important levels. And also where we are going to be stopping with the chickens. That is quest requirements, mithril weaponry, Excalibur, Kratonite weaponry, barge, greater barge, brother's jab necklace, Quest requirement, Barbarian Leaping Salmon, Creighton Night Maul. Quest requirement, Mithril Armor, Ram Skull Helm, Proselyte Armor, Snakeskin Armor, Creighton Knight Armor, Roseblood Armor, Arch Leather Armor, Carapace Armor, Batwing Armor, Reinforced Slayer Helmets, Maple Shield Bows, Utuku Longbows, Asylum Doctor's Ring. And from all of that, what we actually get is Mithril Armor and weapons. And also 22 prayer for rapid heal and void. And so it is time to go get that mithril equipment. Really can't run and bury bones at the same time, unfortunate. Also 39 combat in there somewhere. And I think we've got plenty of feathers. We picked up 6,000 feathers. I don't think we're going to need that many. I guess it depends on where and what we end up fighting here. But if we want to get our mithril set here, we've got to go to multiple different shops. First up, we're going to head over to Louis Legs in Alcarid. Where, unsurprisingly, we can get the legs. Also, he's outside of his house for some reason. Or, I guess it's more of his shop, but still. We're getting ripped off in the Mithril and Adamant tiers. So, any money we're going to be saving eventually on Rune Armor. We are losing a lot of that with Mithril here. So, one set of Mithril plate legs for 7,500 coins. Oh boy. And then, we just need to run to the other stores. Next, we will pick out a weapon. Daggers or swords, basically the same, but a dagger weighs less, so I'll just take a mithril dagger here. 
should be a 325, instead it is 5,010. Luckily, we are in a position here where we have a good enough money maker that this is not the worst thing. But it doesn't feel the best, does it? Next up, we need the plate armor, which we can get here from Horvik. Mithril plate body for 12,000 coins. Uh, and then lastly, we will get a Mithril full helmet from Pexa for 5,000 coins. And with that, we now have full Mithril ready to go. If we check the stats here, our defense goes from, well, the defense goes from 449 to 479, 511, 539. Looking pretty fancy. Unfortunately, the shield is as good as it's going to be getting because the shield shop never stocks anything for whatever reason. Weird, but nothing really I can do about it, so, oh well. And then, our damage goes from 26 to 36 with the amazing Mithril Dagger. And accuracy goes from 497 to 635, so much more accurate. So that's good. And we need to get rid of the steel equipment here. If we check it here, the high alk is 300, but we can only low alk things, so wouldn't get a huge amount from this. And we also don't have any nature runes yet, so I'm going to just go sell this to a shop. Could have sold the steel earlier, but then I wouldn't have been able to do the whole comparison between the stats. So, made a lot of sense to just keep it for now. You can barely even tell we're wielding a weapon here. The Mithril Dagger is very small. Wild that it's so much stronger than this giant steel mace. But there you go. I'm gonna pop down here to the Falador General Store, because it's on my way to another place I'm going. We sell the steel plate legs for 150. So that's half of the high alk. It's reasonable enough. And now we are past the point where we are using equipment that we made ourselves. The pre mining and smithing rework doesn't make that really too possible in the long run. Unfortunately. If we wanted to have a mithril play body, we would need to get 68 smithing. And that's a bit much right now. Instead, we're just going to start buying things from shops. For the most part, at least. And the next thing we need to buy from a shop is a fly fishing rod. All these feathers are not going to help us get any food if we don't have the fishing rod to go with it. Of course, it is actually on the tool belt, but that's not out yet. So here we are. I've got multiple ideas of enemies we could go fight. And we will start with the lowest level one, obviously. Would make the most sense, wouldn't it? No. We will get back to a fishing spot. To prepare our food. 54 cooking. That is Chef's Delights, Raw Bacon Mounds, and Bacon Mounds. None of those exist. Trout isn't really that good, honestly. 
Compared to how it used to be, the ratio of healing between trout and salmon is significantly more skewed in favor of salmon. So, in order to bring the most to each fight here, it might be worth just dropping the trout. We will see how it goes, I suppose. Because we are ready to go to our first monster. Located fairly nearby the fishing spots here, we have the Edgeville Dungeon. So we're going to head in here. There's a note from Mandrith and Vanica here. Those aren't things, don't worry about it. Into the dungeon. Parts of this dungeon are still missing, but those aren't the parts we're trying to go to, so not a huge deal. With 39 combat, should be able to manage okay here. Run past some skeletons, see if they're aggressive, the answer is yes, and continue further into the dungeon here. Past some zombies, which are level 22. So we are getting close to them not being aggressive anymore. Good to know. Some higher level skeletons, and multi-combat is a thing, so that's annoying. Then we have some hobgoblins. And what we really need here, the brass key. Grab one of these, and now we can use the ladder here to get out of the dungeon and into this little hut here. And then we can open the door. Very nice. So this is going to be an even faster way of getting back down to the dungeon here and over to the food. And now we will fight hill giants. They are level 44. So we'll see how this goes. They seem to be hitting us very, very accurately. And there is 34 constitution. Neat. That is nothing. And our drop includes big bones. Big bones give 15 prayer xp which is pretty great pretty great significantly more than regular bones we are taking a decent amount of damage here yeah, again trout don't heal a lot and experience per giant is way, way slower than chickens. 144 compared to 33 from chickens. So, definitely taking us longer to kill one hill giant than five chickens. So this is definitely a slower experience in all ways, shapes, and forms, unfortunately. The XP rates are a little bit out of whack with EOC. And we're just taking tons and tons of damage. I guess it's a opportunity to train some fishing. Mithril armor. You would think it would be acceptable. Since we're almost the same level here. That time we did better. Alright. But now let's look at the drop table. We've gotten big bones. And we got some Limpa roots, onion seeds. There have been substantial changes to the hill giant drop table over the years. They always drop big bones, so that's good. Previously they were dropping regular bones, but big bones exist now, so that's definitely a huge plus of being here now. 100% chance of that. And then, 
we've got the armor and weapons that they used to drop. Stuff like iron full helmets, iron daggers, iron kite shields, bronze maces, and steel longswords. All of those, except for the bronze mace, it seems, were switched into salvage with the mining and smithing rework. So we've got such things as tiny spiky iron salvages, small plated iron salvages, medium plated iron salvages, and small bladed steel salvages. So those are things that exist. We can take these salvages and sell them to the stores for roughly what the items actually would have been worth. So that's the most reasonable way to go about this, I feel. Not as useful as actual drops could have possibly been. But in this instance, none of the things that it would have been were actually things we wanted to have anyways, so. Non-functional hunks of metal, which we can just kind of sell if we feel like it. That's acceptable. What we need to be careful of here is making sure we don't get into multi-combat here. Because we don't need multiple giants attacking us at the same time. Would not be too helpful. Going down to the next section of the drop table, we've got runes. The rarities and quantities are slightly different, but besides the complete absence of law runes, we're pretty much good to go in that department. Which is unfortunate, because getting some law runes would have been nice. Oh well. Honestly, with how much we would need to run to a general store to sell the salvages, I don't think it's even really worth it. They're not worth a lot. They're, they're worth more as invention components than out slash store price items. That would just slow us down here even more, which obviously isn't great. So, probably just not going to bother with that. The amount of time it would take us to run over to a store to sell this for like 60 coins or something horrible. If we want to make money, selling salv iron salvage to stores probably not too helpful. We've got, we've got better options. Honestly, the straight coin drops that we're getting is acceptable as it is. And there is many different amounts of coins that Hill Giants drop. Various quantities, various rarities. Pretty wild. And then we have the Limport Root, which we had earlier. They also drop beers, which we're probably not going to use since that would just drain our stats. Wouldn't be too helpful. And uncut gems. What is missing from this drop table is all of the herbs, which don't come out until herb lore is a thing, and the rest of the rare drop table, like key halves, Dragon square shield halves, rune spears. That's not a thing yet. A lot of this is all on February 2002. So it's coming soon here. Actually, right after we finish Dragon Slayer, in fact. But that is a problem for later. For now, I'm really looking specifically for the one cosmic rune because if we get that we get an upgrade which would actually be helpful 
as it stands, we're taking a decent amount of damage. It's definitely a slower experience in all ways. But we also don't need to constantly spam click every single attack for the chickens. So it's more relaxed. And also we get intermittent fishing breaks. So that's also nice. Here's our here's a charm. That doesn't exist. I guess how worth going and getting the salvages sold really depends on how many salvages we get. Oh, please stop being in multi combat. Multi combat everywhere. How annoying. Our max hit is apparently 81. So that's interesting. Yeah, the experience compared to chickens is just not good. It's really weird how much experience chickens give, honestly. What are you gonna do? This is also painting a bit of a picture of how we might fare against other opponents. But we will see if we move on from hill giants. There is other drops I'd like to get from other enemies too. Specifically in the runes department, really. But the speed that we're killing things is not too fantastic, currently. There's some potato seeds. Nope. Inventory space-wise, we're taking up a lot of space for the food and the fishing and the key. So, that's also something to consider. If we really wanted to get experience, I think we would just stay at chickens permanently, which is really annoying. I mean, eventually we might get to a point where we could hit high enough that it actually matters. But when chickens only have five health compared to the 320 of a hill giant, it's pretty difficult to say that's worth it here. So coming to the end of our first trip here. Ah, the big bones are nice. More prayer experience per click without having to constantly spam everything. But besides that, not too impressed. Really Really what I need is just the one cosmic rune. And then, then we will consider other options. Or we're gonna stay at hill giants. Because realistically, I do not want to just stay at chickens the entire time. That would not be great. But just the XP per hit point is just wild. There's also the option of training magic, since they are technically weak to magic here. But our only magic option is the Staff of Air, so it'd probably even be worse. We wouldn't take any damage, but also we'd be training magic, and that's not actually going to be too helpful here. So, probably just going to stick at it like this. And we hit an 82. I guess it's not really a max hit, it's more of a critical hit kinda not really and by that it means like the top five percent of your chance to hit here are some mind runes so we can hit an 82 amazing so technically if we could like four hit the giants here it might be faster experience but we're not quite to that level yet so we're getting some XP. There's some fire runes. Cool. Yeah, not the runes we need. Really, really just need the cosmic rune. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. 
Chickens are just so much faster. I don't know. Is it really worth it to be here? Maybe I could find something slightly stronger than chickens, which I can... St the real problem is the quantity of chickens is really high, all right next to each other. And I still do want the prayer experience, so... We would need to find something slightly stronger than chickens. Hopefully it would still drop bones. Maybe we wouldn't need to get food. Like, still, being able to one hit constantly would be a benefit. And that all comes down to accuracy and all that. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I think we're done with this inventory after this giant. It's definitely something to think about. I think... We could maybe go with men? Might be an option. Hmm. They're about the same amount of experience as chickens. Let's get out of here. Let's. I guess we can head to the shop this one time. See how much we would get for these handful of salvages. We're up to 1,500 coins in the money pouch. I don't know if that was... I think we got the sales of all the steel in there, too, so that's not quite accurate of how much money we would have made from just the hill giants there. And we also have these runes, which these ones in particular are not too helpful. Inventory space. We're going to see what we can sell these to the shop for. Not that that'd be correct prices, since the shops are, like, way more expensive. Let's see what we can get for these salvages, at least. 32 and 65. Yeah, not really. We can sell these runes for 5 each. That's obviously not right. Also not a huge deal. I will head back to the fishing spot here. And see if I can find a better training spot. Ideally, they give more experience than chickens, but still drop bones. And I guess we still need to stay here until we get a cosmic rune anyway, so... That's where we can at least start here. Just, this is not very good XP. And there's 19 woodcutting. Nothing. That's fine. Oh boy! There's cosmic runes. Oh, glad to see that. Yeah, the, the experience here is just not good enough at all. For whatever reason, the XP to health ratio of most enemies is just completely messed up. For chickens, we need to do two damage to get one experience. For hill giants, it's more like 32. So, so, so much worse. There's monsters with multiple times more health than chickens that still give the same amount of experience. The, the entire system is just a mess. If it made any sense, the chickens would give, like, a half, a quarter of the XP they give. And the same goes for a lot of other very low-level enemies. Well, there he is. 31 attack, strength, and defense. And 23 prayer. Let's, let's leave. This isn't worth it. Maybe when we're stronger, it actually will be worth it. When we can effectively four-hit the giant. Because we definitely have overhitting potential here. Since we can hit... 82s, and chickens only have 5 health. 31, that is nothing, 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 and 23 prayer is nothing. There we go. We've got these cosmic runes, so we can do something with these. And what we're going to do with them is enchant our amulet. 
But we are going to need some air runes for that. And we can buy those from a shop. Specifically, this shop right over here. Ooh, grass star. Fancy. Buying three air runes for a completely ridiculous price of 17. We would technically take the free ones. Not a huge deal. The current amulet gives no stats. That's because it's not enchanted. But if we cast level 2 enchant here, we can make an amulet of defense. Amazing. If we check our stats here, our armor bonus goes from 546 to 552. A whopping 6 armor. Great. Better than the ranged damage we were getting from Amulet of Accuracy, but still not very good. And a second Cosmic Rune we really don't need. So now basically the only thing I want is one Law Rune, honestly. Because this training is just not worth it. We've got level 30 Dark Wizards here, which should drop runes. Although it might be a bit rare. I want to see how we hold up against magic damage here. Our magic defense is quite poor. Probably just going to get hit every single time, honestly. Wouldn't be too surprised by that. But for Dark Wizards, they can drop a variety of runes. And at least we can kill them in fewer hits. Ah, three hits for 64 XP? That's not actually too bad. We'll see if that persists. Also, the quantities of runes are a little bit off, too. And we're also probably not going to hit as accurately since magic. And we also get weakened, which also isn't going to help. Mm. We might be better off with a different alternative. Ah. Eh. Our accuracy is just really bad, too. We, we could always just wait until we're a higher level before we worry about any of this. Nature runes. Yeah, we're also getting our stats dropped. Hmm. There's not too many options for law runes. Would have been good if Hill Giants dropped law runes still. That would have that would have worked out. Would have been able to manage. The money from any drop tables is abysmal. Not worth even considering. And just the XP from chickens is so much better. Ugh. <laughs> Really gonna be doing chickens all the time. It's really feeling like it. It's really feeling like it. Oh, that's not great. My dreams of fighting various giants and getting drops and doing stuff. A bit crushed here, because the experience just so bad. The problem is that chickens are just too good. Weird. Weirdly enough, that's actually the problem here. Alright. Well, I guess we need to... Well, there's a chicken outside. We need to deal with that. Yeah, see these? 34 for one hit every time. Even if we... Even with adamant or rune gear, I just don't think that anything could compare. The XP rates are just way too good. One hitting chickens. Is it authentic? Not really. Chickens was always a decent way to start, but the XP was actually calculated correctly before. 
so that this wouldn't be the only thing you ever want to train on. <sighs> Pretty ridiculous. Pretty ridiculous. 35. Constitution. Nothing. I think I'm going to change my strategy here at the next level. I'm going for all the styles at the same time. Makes sense if the experience rates are acceptable. But if we want to leave chickens, we need a different strategy. And I think that strategy, it should honestly, it should start right now. We're going to get just attack XP. Attack means better weapons, means we can actually get to possibly fighting something else three times faster here. And with how much slower the Mithril Dagger was, I think we really just need to go all the way to Rune before we can even consider switching from chickens. <laughs> Which is hilarious, but also how things are working here. We're not going to be getting any of the bonus from strength, so that's another thing to consider. But so much stats value is just in the weapon. See, our weapon bonus is 28 from just holding the dagger. And for 31 strength, we get another 7. So strength really is not very good. It's still something, but my goodness, is it only something. So, new strategy. Everything goes into attack. For many, many a chicken. Also, I have stopped picking up the bones. Because it's just too much right now. If we want to get prayer experience, this is probably also still the best prayer experience. Because... The prayer experience ratio is even worse than the combat experience ratio. Only like three times more prayer XP instead of four times more combat XP. So, eh. <laughs> this is probably going to continue to be the best prayer training. But also, you have to pick up every single bow, and it's just. I can't be bothered right now. There's 32 attack. The new strategy already. Getting to work. Also, 500 total milestone. Nifty. I will take it. Of course, that's still counting the stats that don't exist, but good enough. Good enough. 33 attack. Nothing. 34 attack. Nothing. 35 attack. Nothing. Actually is quest requirement. Okay. 36. Constitution. Nothing. 36 attack. And 41 combat. That's also the requirement for the Frostbite Dagger in Daemonheim. Lots of these random little bits in Daemonheim are not really that useful. All these extra rare slayered monster drops. However, you get all these weird little bits. Not, not really too useful. And I think we're going to be higher than 36 attack by the time Dungeoneering comes out. 37 attack. That is flurry and greater flurry. More... Abilities. 38 attack. Nothing. 37 constitution. Yay. 39 attack. Nothing. 40 attack. That's a milestone and achievement and all that. And that is 
the Brian Saber and Fractite weaponry later. But more importantly, we actually get Adamant weaponry. This would be the point where you might go ahead and switch to something else. But unfortunately, we can't get any offhand or two-handed adamant weapon. So our total damage is still being severely capped. If we go pick up an adamant dagger, it would be better than the mithril dagger, for sure. Clearly. But not, not really good enough. I think the correct and most expedient way to go forwards here is to continue fighting chickens. As unfortunate as that might be. When, when we have only two thirds of the damage, it doesn't get us past the massively inflated chicken XP very quickly here. So, probably not even going to buy an adamant weapon, since it's not going to help us here. Just keep on stabbing chickens. 38 constitution, and 43 combat, but no actual unlocks. 41 attack, nothing. 42 attack. That is a requirement for Void. There's actually a lot of those. Well, that's not out yet. 39 Constitution. Nothing. 43 attack. And also, 44 combat. No unlocks. 44 attack, no one knocks. 40 constitution. That is, portents of restoration five. All the different kinds. Nifty. 45 attack, that is, the ability sever. When EOC comes out, we are going to have so many abilities we can use. It's going to be, it's going to be a thing. Forty-six attack, no unlocks. Forty-one constitution, nothing. Every time it says more life points, so. I guess it is something. Good enough. 47 attack. No unlocks, but 46 combat. 48 attack. Says no unlocks, but apparently that is the level required to wield the rune cane. So that's something. Why exactly the rune cane would be a different requirement than all the other rune stuff. Hard to say. But there you go. Something. 42 constitution. Another bit of the requirements for void armor. And more life points. 49 attack. No unlocks, but level 47 combat. 43 constitution. No unlocks. And there it is. 50 attack. Super, super important level. Brawler's Hook Necklace, Zephyrium Weaponry, Karis, Leaf Blade Equipment, Sacred Clay Scimitar, but 
actually what we're looking for. Rune Weaponry. Time to get a big upgrade. Completely skipped Adamant Weapons because they would not help us against chickens. So here we are. Heading up to the Champions Guild to get our weapon. We do have some options here. But of the three, we're going to go with the best one. Right up here in the Champions Guild. We can get in here very easily with all our quest points. And pop up here. Where is Scavo? Right there. We're getting the Rune Mace. So, buy one Rune Mace for 16,000. Acceptable price. And then if we check our loadout here, we go from the dagger with 37 damage, 794 accuracy, up to 51 damage, 1,190 accuracy. So, significantly more accurate. And also a bit more damage. Open bonus. Went from 28 to 43. And now, with our full mithril, except for steel kite shield, and a rune mace, and a Amulet of Defense and Champion's Cape. We now will go try out something that isn't chickens. But first, selling off the dagger. 150? That is way, way less than we bought it for, but okay. Don't need it anymore. Don't have the inventory space. 23 fire making we are going to a slightly further away location with this fighting so I'm cooking up more salmon basically an inventory worth then dropping all the trout cooking up some more salmon had a few salmon already from earlier so a little bit salmon heavy on this first round which that's fine 23 fire making is nothing. And this time, instead of heading to the hill giants up in that shack, we're heading into Varrock. But first, we need to look at our loadout here. The numbers are slightly off as far as damage is concerned. It seems that even though the tooltips for all the weapons say a particular amount of damage they do, there is some kind of cap based on strength level. So where this says weapon 43, it should be 48. So as we get more strength levels, presumably this will go up. Also, where it says strength bonus is zero, that's not entirely accurate. Due to rounding and fractional points in everything, the defense amulet's mysterious little bit of strength bonus isn't calculating into the strength bonus right here. In the full evolution of combat points, and numbers, it's got 8 point something strength bonus, which calculates to 0.8 and doesn't get rounded up to 1. But as we can see here, damage goes from 50 to 51. So that means we're actually getting more value out of the amulet of defense, just a little bit. 
we'll take that little bit of bonus and head down into the Varrock Sewers. Where we are running pretty much all the way through here, all the way to the end. We will see what is all going to be aggressive on us on this journey. Because that's going to inform how much food we might need to escape. Assuming we don't just end up getting Varrock teleports together here, which would be useful. Like, looks like ghosts, level 25, Let's see if they're aggressive. So far the skeletons haven't been, the ghosts are not. Got all these doors we need to open, unfortunately. Then we have zombies, which are aggressive. Then we come to this spider web, where we need something to slash the spider web before it's changed to just a pass spider web business. And we have the axe with us, so that checks out. Also, an achievement. Stick the knife in. Did not bring a knife, just have this axe. And now, we need to run past some deadly red spiders, which are level 95, and luckily non-aggressive, and get to our target, Moss Giants. They are level 51, we are level 47, with basically none of our stats comparatively in strength and defense, so they're probably going to hit us pretty effectively. But we have a Rune Mace. So we can hit them pretty effectively, too. What are our max hits going to be? There's a 93. 103. Not bad. Not bad at all. And we'll just pick up this. Salvage is going to be awkward here, slightly. If we bring up the drop table of Moss Giants here. Oh, our max is... Oh, not max. 113 was good enough for a crit there, so that's something. Only two Moss Giants here, so we're kind of waiting for them to respawn. Oh, that's okay, 117. Yeah, we're hitting, hitting good. Not all the time, there's the zero. But hitting them often enough and high enough, I think we can justify being here. And that's 180 XP. Instead of... 30s from chickens. So I think the rune mace was the correct play here. So With the salvage, it's an awkward situation. Because there's a lot more salvages than there are things that would have been salvaged. For this tiny plated steel, that's correct. That would have replaced the steel medium helmet. There's also Tiny Spiky Mithril for the Mithril Short Sword and Medium Plated Steel for the Steel Kite Shield. Eventually there's also a Mithril Spear added, which is converted to a different salvage. And then there's also some black equipment that doesn't even exist yet. So. Like the square shield here, which would have been a nice upgrade if that existed yet. So maybe we come back here in the future, get ourselves a black square shield. Because pretty much any better shield for at least quite some time is gonna be turned into salvage, so we won't even be able to get that as a drop. But a black shield would be acceptable. Better than our steel one, at least. Eventually, there's going to be non-salvaged shields that exist. So we will get to that eventually. And there is a black full helm. That's not accurate. Which is really unfortunate, because I would love to have this. High Alks for 823 coins. Could definitely get some value out of that. Would be nice. Continuing down the list here, we've got the Magic Staff, which is 
level one staff, but doesn't give any runes, so definitely not something we would use as a weapon. Probably would just sell it to the staff shop. For the runes, we've pretty much got all of them. Moss Giants are one of the things I was looking to move on to, and I'm glad this rune mace is working out, so, so far this seems pretty good. We can get law runes, nature runes, pretty much every rune we could dream of here. So that's pretty nice. Blood runes don't exist yet, neither do all of the herbs, similar to when we were at Hill Giants. There's plenty of different coin drops, that's fine. The steel bar and coal were replaced with stone spirits. We still get spinach rolls here. Oh, there's some nature runes. So, if we get some spinach rolls, we could eat them, I guess. That'd be something. And then, also, we have access to the gem drop table, or the rare drop table, which is currently only gems. And that's fine. Well, there is 32 strength and defense for nothing and nothing. Let's see if we can see any improvement here. It says 52 now. That seems better. So yeah, I think this is actually, I mean, we're also spending a little time between fights. I guess we were spending a little time between chickens after we killed all eight, so. I think in the fullness of XP rates here, this is probably better. And it's just going to keep getting better as we get more strength levels and everything. And there's an emerald. Fancy. Exact, 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 exact <laughs> quantities and rarities of all these drops is a bit off all things considered. But if we want to do anything with this emerald, we would need to put in some work. We could maybe just... Hmm, not really worth alking exactly. We could go and make this into something. An alk it. Say if we made another angular defense, the alk would be like 700. Not hugely worth it. Maybe we could buy a chisel from the general store, cut it for a little bit of crafting experience, and then sell it. it would definitely be something that you would put in your bank if you had a bank. Overall, this is going pretty well. We're not very defensive, but that's fine because we're fighting fast enough that we don't really need to worry about getting hit by both at the same time or anything. So that's working out perfectly. Another thing that Moss Giants drop is a whole ton of seeds. Technically we could go to a free-to-play world and all the seeds would be replaced with five coins. But then we'd be on a free-to-play world, so eh. Probably also going to leave a little earlier than would be strictly necessary, just to be safe here. Although really the only things that attacked us in the entire way were a couple of zombies. I think we'd probably just be fine. So this is where we're going to be for a while. Ideally, we get some law runes here and with all the experience we need to get we're gonna be here for a while so presumably we will get more of the things on the drop table I think since we're running right back past the general store picking up the handful of salvages that we actually can would be fine Money making, they do drop decent piles of coins pretty frequently. There's some more nature runes, pretty nice. Don't know exactly what we're going to alk. 
Might end up dropping the nature runes before we get to other things we're doing. It really depends. Inventory space is at a premium, of course. But overall, this is working nicely. There's a medium spiky mithril salvage. That would have been the mithril spear. No, can't have that. We, we really are working with less drops since the drop table that we should be getting would have represented 100% of the drops. And instead we're leaving huge swaths of it on the ground. Unfortunate, for sure. Hundred and elevens. Very decent. Very decent hits. And the actual drops here are also obviously much better than chicken. One thing I'm slightly concerned with is when they become unaggressive. I guess if we're not here too long, they won't become unaggressive. All depends on the amount of time we're here. There's some air runes. If we can get we have fire runes here? Not really. We'll buy some fire runes maybe. And then we can, depending on how many law runes we get, use more teleports to Varrock in order to speed this up slightly. It's probably a solid strat. Well, all assumes that we actually get law runes as drops though. So, well, that has to come first, clearly. We're definitely staying here for a decent amount of time, too. So, that's working out. 30-30. Honestly, expected to be taking more damage than this. Actually going pretty fine. Would love to have that black square. That would be better. It, it would literally help us here. Would be an upgrade. That's okay. So I think we're going to finish up this inventory bring our first bits to the bank well not to the bank to the general store and see what we can get for them it's not going to be much but that's okay 33 strength and defense also the monster giants are no longer aggressive which is unfortunate nothing and quest requirement body armor Flame Burst Defender. Equivalent to nothing, I suppose. 24 Prayer. That is no unlocks. But we are out of food, so it is time to get out of the dungeon here. Did not get any law runes, so we won't be able to be teleporting around for this trip or the next one. But it is an idea for the future. So I think we will go and buy at least a handful of fire runes. Because unfortunately, we can't squeeze past this web here. Just cut it, it's fine. There we go. Run past the skeletons and zombies. They don't do too much damage. Looks like we're also going to be having to open a bunch of doors here, unfortunately. As we try to get in and out of here. Not too many people hanging out in the Varrock sewers on members' worlds. One bit. Not at all. Yeah. If we grab a few fire runes, we can get any law runes to instantly become Varrock teleports. And also, we got some fire runes, we could possibly make some alkin going on. We got more nature runes than we know what to do with. But the question would be, if we alk this for 240, the cost of the fire runes is something to consider. If the fire runes are more expensive, that we would get from the shop. We're just basically buying magic experience. This is this is the smallest salvage we can pick up, so 
If we can at least make a decent amount of profit here, we're actually fine. These are the tiny plated steel salvage. Shopkeep, we'll buy it for 120. Low Alk is 160. Low Alk costs three fire runes. So 40 coins for three fire runes. It's about the same. We could sell the emerald for 15. Buy a chisel for 14. Craft a gem for 68 crafting experience. And then sell this for 150. Examine this emerald. That looks for 300. Maybe we high alk the gems here too. Technically we can make more by going and actually making anything. It looks like the price that we're getting for selling is 75% of low alk. Which is about right. Check the classic here. Yep, has been the same low alk on an emerald. So we, we can alk an emerald. We will have to buy a chisel every time that we get a gem. But we do make more money and crafting experience by doing so. So I think that makes sense. So if we're going to be alking things, potentially teleporting, could probably go for a decent stack of fire runes here. They are 17 coins each, though. We can make decent money. What if we buy... How much, how much is 50, then? Some. We have 3,400 left there. Let's take them out of this cash stack. A yeah. 100 would be... 1700 coins. I think that's fine for now. And the air runes would only be useful for teleporting. So that's fine. So let us low alk the salvage here for 160. And low alk this emerald for 200. Brilliant. Once we get law runes in here, that is another inventory space used. But honestly, being there for a slightly less time, so the Moss Giants stay aggroed longer, probably fine. More AFK, in quotes. Man, yeah. this is going to be a spot for Law Runes, so we'll have Teleports and Low Alchemies, at least. We still need the Axe and the Tinderbox, and holding on to this Diamond... And the coins are 6,000 feathers, fly fishing rod. This is all working out. Honestly, if we combine in all the fishing and cooking and running, this is probably still a slower experience than chickens. But at least we're getting some useful things out of it. So that's okay. 34. Strength and defense. And also combat, 49. Nothing. And freedom. That's a good ability that we will have when it exists. <laughs> also, got some cosmic and chaos runes. So I'm going to see what we can do with those. Don't really need them for spells or anything. We're going to see how accurate selling these to a shop would be. Because, hey, a little more money. Why not? Got a spinach roll. That heals 20, like all the other lowest level foods. While researching cosmic and chaos runes, the alk values are nowhere close to how they are. So, selling to the shop is way, way more than it should be. Should, should be in like two. So that's not quite accurate. And the magic staff here. Only gonna alk for like a little bit. We got the runes, might as well. 80. Hmm. A little expensive on the fire runes, but we got some magic speed for it, so that's fine. Yeah. 
The only runes ever sold in rune shops, even the later ones in RuneScape Classic, are the elemental runes, mind, body, and soul. So any chaos, death, blood, cosmic, nature, or law runes that we want, we need to get as drops. At least until things are changed. And we still do not get any law runes, so that's okay. Would speed things up here though, and that would be great. 35. Strength and defense. That is part of the Cathery Cliff shortcut. Barbarian catching tunas and druidic armor. Fancy. Got a medium plated steel salvage here. So uh, that's pretty cool. We can even low alk that. So let's do that. For 480 coins. Not bad. This is definitely still slower money than other options. But at least we're getting combat experience out of it, so. Good enough. Good enough. 25 prayer. That is a quest requirement, ancient mace, and protect item. Don't have too much use for protect item. Whole point here is not to die. 44 constitution. Nothing there. But also, last level. That actually got us 50 combat. I mean, I guess last, last level. Either the strength or defense, maybe both of them. Yeah, 50 combat. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. 36 defense and strength. That is nothing. And the Draken's Medallion. Fascinating. Didn't even know that had a level requirement. Wild. Still have not gotten any law runes, unfortunately. 51 fishing. That is Azure Skill Champas. Sure. But realistically, we've already unlocked all the fish currently, so just slightly faster. Which is still good. 26 prayer. That is, Hawkeye and Unrelenting Force. The range and magic prayers don't exist yet, so. Not that. 37, Strength and Defense. That is part of the Faldor Wall shortcut. The ability is Quake and Destroy. And Reflect. None of those. 55 cooking. That is anchovy pizzas. Those do exist. Not gonna make them though. 38. Strength and defense. As part of the Yanil wall shortcut. And nothing. Lots of agility shortcuts. Very cool. Agility doesn't even exist yet. 27 prayer. That is the magic prayers. Mystic lore and supercharge. Don't exist. 45. Constitution. No unlocks. But anything that took 45 cooking. Yep. 39. Strength and defense. That is nothing, nothing, and 53 combat. 28 prayer for steel skin. Actually can do that. 40 strength and defense. That is achievements, pop-ups, 
milestones, 54 combat, a quest requirement, Fractite Maul, quest requirements, and so, so many different pieces of armor, my goodness. For things that don't exist, we have Elite Black, Dagon High, Corrupt Zuriels, Necromancer, Split Bark, Lunar, Detailed Castle Wars, Corrupt Morrigans, Corrupt Stadius, Corrupt Vestas, Green Dragonhide, Penance, Spirit Shield, Fractite, Brile, Droma Leather, U Shield Bow, and Spine Beam Longbows. What does exist is Adamant. So now, we can go and get some Adamant armor. Seems like a solid plan. Once we're done with this inventory. Would be buying the Adamant play body in the Champions store. In the Champions Guild, if that was still a thing. So instead we need to come over to the... Effectively the replacement shop. And get an Adamant play body for basically the correct value. Interestingly enough, the Adam and Play Body originally cost 40,000 coins, but was changed at some point. So, accurate to the later changed value of an Adam and Play Body, I guess. An Adam and Full Helm from Pexa for almost twice the price. And lastly, Adamant Plate Legs from Louis Legs for more than the price. If we take out all of our coins here, how are we using shops if we can't use the coin pouch? Anyways, we've got 40 5,000 coins left. And I guess we're going to make a little bit more when we deal with the mithril here. But let us see how we're looking here. Our defense total armor goes from 615 to 650 to 690 to 728. So we're adamant armor with a rune mace and a steel kite shield. Looking really weird. But then we can alk all the mithril. Get 500 coins for that. 200 for that. And 300 for that. We got a whopping thousand coins back from the mithril. Thanks. We have not been having very good luck getting any law runes. Almost to a suspicious level, honestly. From the amount of experience we gained there, it was something like 300 Moss Giants. And presumably, their drop rate of a Law Rune is in the uncommon. So, I don't know about that. Now that we have Adamant, I want to try switching it up a little bit. See if another option might work out. New targets, new locations, new things we need. First up, I'm going to get some more fire runes here to out some stuff. Costs a fair bit, but it's acceptable. I'm going to drop these air runes because reasons. Also going to drop the fly fishing rod and all these feathers. Because we are nowhere near a fly fishing spot here. And we have better options. I'm going to pick up this lobster pot. And head to Karamja. Turned off the boat cutscene. So we just skip straight to Kramja. Very nice. 
where we will chop some trees because we're going to need some fires. I could really technically go make a better hatchet, but yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Really would help with our 19 woodcutting here, though. Would speed this up a little bit. But woodcutting is going to be a whole situation for a long time. So we're not going to worry about it too much. Well, there is 20 woodcutting. Very cool. That's medium jungle, blood spindle trees, and marimus hatchets. None of those exist. But what does exist is the Karamja fishing dock here, where we're going to fish some lobsters. An absolutely classic fishing location. And also an achievement for fishing something. Could have done that earlier with the net and bait spots here, but obviously lobsters are better. So. These are much higher level fish than trout and salmon, so we're probably going to get them much slower and then burn more of them. But for the amount they heal, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Anybody got a fire? I do. I have the fire. How many of these lobsters are we going to burn? That is the question. Well, luckily, there's trees somewhat nearby. So, not super worried about it. <laughs> if it takes, like, three inventories of fishing before we have a decent supply of food, that's okay. And it is really looking that direction, isn't it? My goodness. Luckily, we have 55 cooking, so it's not as bad as it could have been. All of our training is paying off, for sure. Yeah, not too bad. And how much XP? 132. That's pretty good. Decent training. Probably not quite as fast, obviously, as trout and salmon, but still. Could be worse. Could be worse. 24 fire making. That's nothing. We managed to fish and then cook enough lobsters using the first fire, so technically we didn't even need the second log there, but well, that's okay. So now we're going to get out of here, quickly pay fare with the customs officer here. We don't have any problems with getting off Karamja. And we head to the location we're going for. Specifically, we're heading to the Asgarnia Ice Dungeon. Right down to the south here. With these lobsters, we'll be able to stay much longer than trout and salmon. But it also depends on how well we can deal with the multi-combat down here. Because there is a lot more enemies, which is one of the reasons I am here. When we were waiting around for a significant amount of time for the moss giants to respawn. So, ultimately, this will probably be better experience. And once things become unaggressive, that'll also be helpful. Here we've got Ice Warriors and Ice Giants to, connect, to contend with. We angle ourselves correctly. Just fight one thing at a time. Should work out. And of course, we've got drop tables that we need to consider. And an achievement for killing an Ice Giant. Very cool. Since there are two different enemies here, we have two different drop tables. And all the complications that have piled up over the years here. First up, we've got the Ice Giants. 
pretty normal. Very similar to what we had with the Moss and Hill Giants. Always drop big bones, which is fantastic for us. Because that means prayer experience. And a bunch of metal stuff. Still can't get a new black shield, unfortunately. Because that doesn't exist yet. Eventually they will, but it's not a huge deal either way. For the other six metal items on this drop table, they've all been converted into salvages of many, many different types. Like this medium bladed iron salvage, which we can now low elk. Oh, we attacked by two things. Yeah, we're fast enough. And we need to wait a significant amount of time, honestly, before we heal. Because lobsters heal quite a bit. I mean, that's not a bad thing, though, is it? Moving down, we've got runes. I've got some questions about the <laughs> law runes. I tested a few hundreds of more kills on moss giants and then ice giants and did not get any law rune drops so those might not actually exist either here or there which would be kind of annoying well that's okay oh boy getting attacked by everything first heal 112 hmm. interesting should be more than that get more than that yeah whatever Good enough. Good enough. We have these ice warriors are the problem. Anyways, on the runes department, they may not actually drop law runes. So, I guess we will see as we progress here. The real reason we're here is the better experience, honestly. Because there's more things. Ice Giants also drop tons of coins, which is good. Wines, which we're probably not going to use because they would impact our stats. Bananas, which is an absolutely wild drop. And then access to the rare drop table for all the gems. Tiny Blunt Mithril. Yeah, that's right. Let me go grab that. We also got all these stone spirits. I think, yeah, because those are replaced other things that did exist before. Oh, there's some logins. Yeah, there you go. Just got really unlucky previously. I will take it. Now, log runes are not going to be particularly helpful here, since we're kind of nowhere near any teleports. And... Teleporting to Falador wouldn't be too helpful. Let me just stock these up for now. And also alk this Mithril Salvage for 400. Not bad. So the Ice Giant table makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Even more Larns. Wow. RNG was being weird, apparently. I did like 500 kills here. Hmm. Weird. <laughs> I'm not going to complain about it, though. I'm not going to complain about it. More coins, more bones. Very good. But then we have ice warriors. And what a what a mess this is for some reason. Originally, they dropped a few metal pieces, some runes, bones, and the rare drop table. But now, pretty much all of that is gone, removed, a giant mess. Really strange. Ice Warriors no longer drop bones, which I guess makes sense since they're just a bunch of ice. But also the giants are a bunch of ice and they still drop bones, so I don't know. 
which is kind of weird. All of the metal bits were replaced with random salvage, it seems. It didn't really coincide with what they dropped. And supposedly there is a 12 noted salvage drop. We'll see if we get that. That'd be really wild as a drop. But it seems like it was more rebalanced to actually drop equivalent things for its level comparable to the Ice Giants. It doesn't really match what it would have dropped, so that's fine. I mean, it's the opposite of fine. It's disappointing. But what they also changed was removing the nothing drop and the 15 coins drop for many, many more coins than that. Which functionally means instead of getting some random salvages, we're just getting more coins, like 300 there, which is pretty wild. Also pays for not having any rune drops anymore. Oh, slightly different, different quantities, different rarities. It's all a mess. Overall, we got much more enemies here we can fight. That means more experience. No herbs here at all, which is also fine because that means more drops on the drop table that actually exist, except for the ice warriors, clearly. It's all kind of a mess. Good enough, though. Well, apparently this doesn't count, and now we're getting attacked by two things. Aerial loot apparently does not work around walls. Yeah. Well, there it is, 41 strength and defense. So we can attack by two things. Rude. That is nothing, nothing, and a medium clue scroll. We stand like over here. There's options. Yeah, if we mostly focus on the ice giants, especially after things become unaggressive, this will work out just fine. Mostly getting coins, prayer XP, and hopefully some more law runes. Would be nice. Let's need to figure out what is going on with the lobsters here. But definitely going to be faster experience, probably. Just because more things to fight. How much experience is each ice giant here? Really don't want to take multiple t combats here. 180, that's about the same. So, this is where we're going to be training. Looking good. 46 Constitution. And I looked it up, and apparently the level required to get maximum out of lobsters is actually 48. So it doesn't quite coincide with the cooking level. I guess it was changed to that, and the cooking level kept the same just for nostalgia of how much lobster is healed. So technically we're not going to get the maximum healing out of that quite yet. And then for swordfish, that's not until 56. So we will see if swordfish ends up being okay at the end here. Because we're not really going that far with training here probably. I guess we'll see. Lobsters might end up being better. Really depends on the scaling down of the healing for swordfish in the end. But for now, we're gonna slowly heal more as we level up our constitution. 29 prayer. Nothing. 42 strength and defense. That is a quest requirement, Void Mace, Void Equipment, Berserk, 
and more void. Void requirements at level 42. None of those things exist. 30 prayer. That is milestone achievement, all that. A quest requirement and the twisted bird skull necklace. Nifty. First inventory completed. Setting this last lobster to each once around here, heal up all the damage we take from all the pirates and hobgoblins and everything. And we come out of that with 15,000 coins. That's pretty good. Seems like we are running a deficit on nature runes though. So eventually we might not be able to alk anything. So we're going to have to take things to the general store on Karamja after that. Well, that's okay. Not the biggest deal, all things considered. Really just here for the combat experience. And that seems to be working out. Stayed a very, very long time once things were unaggressive. Because, my goodness, lobsters heal significantly more. We'll bring this sapphire over to the general store, cut it, alk it. It's working out. 52 fishing. That is desert souls. Nifty. Again, don't know how much Menaphos fishing we're going to end up doing. Just because there's not really trees there. Well, we'll have to investigate that. If we still need to train fishing and cooking when that comes out. 43 strength and defense. Nothing and nothing. Also, combat 56. Just keeps on going up. Not too important. 47 constitution. More life points. Yep, that's what we get. 44 strength and defense. Nothing, nothing. And 57 combat. 31 prayer. That is a quest requirement. Ultimate strength. And we can go into the monastery now. So now we can get all the stuff up there. Like the monk's robes. And the holy symbol. Enchanting. And the altar that gives more prayer points. That's cool. And also, this is the final nature rune. So we're now officially out of nature runes. Beginning to question if ice giants drop nature runes. The drop tables of these much lower level things have been changed slightly over the years multiple times. So Most people don't really have a reason to go back through here and see if the drops are still correct. But I have found a place where I can get a law rune, so oh, it's right here. And I also had another one if this ended up not working. But now we're going to just have to pick up anything that we regularly alk and bring it over to the Karamja General Store. So that's still fine. Hmm, if I just drop these fire runes we're not going to get any natures, and we can't alk anything. Not too useful right now. That'll give us another inventory space so we can have longer trips. So, that'll be nice. General store time. Got a lot of gems here. That's still some crafting experience. Had to buy the chisel, drop the chisel. And what can we get for all of this stuff? A decent amount. Just need to be careful to not sell the diamond. That that is that is the important part here. That would be devastating. Yeah, now we have more inventory space. So at least we have that going for us. Fifty-six cooking. That is snipper and gissel potatoes in game time. And stop burning fat snail. So now, we will never burn some snails. Fantastic. 
There's that very weird ice warrior drop I was talking about. Twelve noted tiny blunt mithril salvages. Why is it twelve? <laughs> How'd they come up with that? Wild. 485, strength and defense. As a quest requirement, part of Barbarian Leaping Sturgeon. Admin Berserker Shields, Admin Spike Shields, Enchanted Armor, Fremnic Helmets, Golden Precision, Precision Bracelet in Damonheim, Shadow Silk Hood in Damonheim, and the Maple, maple Shield Bow Sighted. Nope. None of those things. Some interesting stuff, though. 32 prayer. Nothing. Without Alex, our inventory is getting incredibly full. Which is pretty funny. It is par for the course out here. 48 constitution. No unlocks, but level 58 combat. 46 strength and defense as a quest requirement and nothing just an inventory absolutely full of things to sell let's see how much we get in total from a full inventory here starting with 42.8 all these all these all these all these all these and this now we have 45.2, so a few thousand coins at least. Did end up having to drop a few things since we had too many salvages. That's just showing that we are doing very well at staying at the Ice Giants. It is working out pretty well. 33 prayer. No unlocks. 47 strength and defense nothing nothing and 59 combat 49 constitution more life points and that's it 34 prayer incredible reflexes that is incredible that is an achievement for 60 combat. Recommended level to train under war in his retreat for fighting bosses. Yes, we can now get Reaper assignments. 48 strength and defense. That is Cleave, Marksman Boots, Resonance, and 60 combat. We. Uh, do not have access to Reaper assignments yet. So we will not be doing that. But 60 combat, that is a nice milestone. Got a lot more Mithril in this inventory. That is very solid sell prices. We would have needed so many more nature runes to alk all these things, my goodness. There you go. There is some rune javelins. That is rare from the rare drop table. So quite rare indeed. Nothing that we can have though. The rare drop table has been very much updated. So another thing to worry about in the future. 49. Strength and defense, nothing, nothing, and not even a combat level. That's fine. Ooh, now that's something fancy. An uncut dragon stone. That is more from the rare drop table. Looks like one uncut dragon stone is just uncommon on the rare drop table. Still rarer than a diamond by a significant amount. That's pretty neat. 
Having a Dragonstone in the future could be pretty good. But even if we had a Dragonstone right now, we wouldn't be able to do much with it. And there is 50 Constitution. Well, that's level 61 combat. Also a quest requirement, Portents of Restoration 6, and Tusca's Wrath. That's a pretty good one. Many, many opportunities in the future. But for now, just 50. And as we figured out, that does not actually give us full swordfish healing. So, work in progress there. 35 prayer. That is quest requirements and protect from summoning. I don't, I don't think that's very useful. But thanks. Thanks, game. More to sell. These, and these, and these, and these, and these, and this. We're really making some pretty good money here, all things considered. And there it is. 50 strength and 50 defense. Well, that is a quest requirement, Barbarian Swordfish, and the Zephyria Maul. So nothing really in strength. But in defense, oh my goodness, many, many things. For the things that don't exist, we have the Boba Strangler Longbow in Damonheim, Magic Shield Bow, all the War Priest Tier 2, Ghost Hunter Tier 2, Strong Slayer Helmet, Dragonstone Armor, Spinal Leather, Duskweed, Zephyrium, the Spirit Cape, Rockshell Spined, Blue Dragonhide Armor, Chaos Armor, Battle Armor, Sacred Clay, Skeletal, Mystic, and what actually exists, Rune Armor. And so, we're going to go get some rune armor. In total, we made 90,000 coins here at the Ice Giants. Bringing our total cash stack to 134,000. Although I guess we do have a few things we can sell here too, so it might be a little more. But the only rune armor store is at the Champions Guild. So we're going to run over there. Selling off the final bits here. And this emerald. General store. Run now. Not selling the lobsters. Have one more thing that I want to try to do with those. We ended up with 48 law runes. It's pretty good. Does really really does not seem like the ice giants drop nature runes. We are working with what we've got here. So, to the Champions Guild, where we will purchase what we can. The st shop stock here is not accurate whatsoever. We got all these things, and it'd be really great to buy that, wouldn't it? Oh, unfortunately, not the case. All we can get here would be rune plate legs, the rune chain body, and we already have the rune mace as our weapon, and so we will buy those. Rune plate legs for 25,000 coins. That is a very, very good price. And rune chain body for 41,000 coins. Still acceptable. And also has the same stats as a rune plate body, so that saves us some hassle in the future. If we look at the loadout here. Our armor value goes from 817 to 866 to 917. 
and we look like an absolute disaster. With our rune chain body, which doesn't go well with all the other plated kind of look. The adamant full helm, the steel kite shield. At least it goes with the rune mace. At least we have that going for us. And since we don't have any nature runes, we just have to sell the adamant to the shop for a whopping 500 and 300. Oof. Eh, could be worse. To draw all the rest of that. Gets us back up to 71,000. So we're still doing okay. The shield is going to be a constant problem. And always really has been. But there is still something we could technically do with the helmet. If it wasn't for the mining and smithing rework. So I'm going to go for one final run here. For one final target. And then we're basically done. Honestly, this probably isn't going to go very well. But I guess it doesn't have to go very well. We have a few more lobsters here. And we are heading to the Karamja Volcano. Where we are going to fight some lesser demons. Before the mining and smithing rework, they would have dropped the rune medium helmet, which would have been an upgrade. And before the evolution of combat, they would have been melee enemies, instead of magic like they are now. So we will see if multi-combat here against level 70 magic-based enemies in our full rune how well that's really going to go. Also, these bats are attacking, which is also not great. We seem to be able to hit decently, but they're also hitting pretty decently. We've already used a food. Compared to how long we could go against ice giants, that is devastating amounts of damage. Two food per lesser demon. Ouch. For their drop table, a lot of things have changed. The ashes are now accursed ashes, which is something else entirely. These give a prayer experience, where originally they were just normal ashes, which wouldn't have done so. For the metal items, a lot of them have been replaced with salvage. But also, there's a whole bunch of new black items on the drop table, which we really can't use. Pretty much a medium plated mithril salvage for the mithril armor, and then a tiny plated rune salvage for the rune helmet. Bad, what you can dive here. We're taking heavy damage here, my goodness. And some grapes, yay. As far as runes are concerned, the chaos runes are gone, but fire and death remains, which is thematically appropriate, I suppose. All the herbs are not here yet, because herb is not a thing. Yep. Coins still exist, that's on the table. The wine has been replaced with grapes and lobsters. So one food and one kind of a resource to make the wines, technically. And then I got the gold replaced with stone spirits. And the rare drop table. So ultimately, the only real reasons for us to be here would be the rune salvage. But between how much we would need to go and get food honestly not even worth it. We would desperately need some ranged weapons and armor. Or at least be significantly higher level. Because as it stands, lesser demons, not, so, not a good choice. With the amount of damage we're taking, I doubt we would have even bothered, even if they did still drop the rune medium helm. 
So, that's pretty much it. Base 50's melee stance and 35 prayer, not too shabby. Armor and weapons, as good as it's gonna get. We are looking ridiculous. But we are ready for Dragon Slayer. Next time, goodbye. Mm -hmm.